Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Dominich and I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works. If this is your first time visiting our YouTube channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below to stay up to date with all of the videos that we post. Today, I would like to talk to you about creating a dynamic date table using the Power Query Editor. So recently I was working one-on-one uh, -on -one with someone and they had a particular request for a date table and they needed some help making this date table dynamic and they wanted to you know be able to have a date table to analyze their report their sales being able to look in the past a few years prior as well as being able to look at some dates ahead in the future to be able to do some forecasting and things like that so we went in and set up that date table for them using the Power Query Editor, so I thought, why not go ahead and create a video on that here now? So the first question is, why do you need a date table? So if you are working with your, your model and you already have a date column and you can use that date column in the report to be able to analyze the data that you are looking at, what is the need for a separate date table? Well, one reason why you might want to add a separate date table is to be able to carry out time intelligence functions. Power BI has a set of time intelligence functions that you can utilize, but it does require a date table. So without a date table, you can't easily perform those time intelligence functions like year to date, quarter to date, month to date. So that's one reason. Another reason is it allows you to be able to, you have more control over the granularity of your data. You can drill down into specific levels like the year, the quarter, the month, the week, and even the day to provide the additional adult levels of detail in analyzing these dates. You can customize the date table to include additional columns like fiscal year, fiscal period, holidays, working days. And another reason is you might have more than one fact table in your model. And if you have more than one fact table, creating that separate date table as opposed to just leveraging a column on one of those fact tables allows you then to build relationships between each fact table. This will then allow you to filter the data on both fact tables. You can use that date table and you can then filter, you know, the data on this fact table looking into a particular quarter or looking into a particular year using that same date table. So let's go ahead, enough talking, let's go ahead and dive into the Power BI Desktop and the Power Query Editor to take a look. So here I have uh, just a sample report uh, using a failed banks data set that I got from data.gov. So you can see here I have a bank name column, a city, a state, a closing date, and a city state column. Now we do have that closing date column, but again, remember, I wanna create a full date table that I can use here and that is going to allow me to slice by some additional fields that we're gonna add in here. And we're also gonna make this date table a bit dynamic. So I'm gonna go off screen here so I won't be in the way of anything at all. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do in creating this new date table is to go in here and create a new blank query. So from the Home tab in the Power Query Editor, go ahead and select New Source and Blank Query. Now, up here in the formula bar, what we want to do is we want to add in the following. We want to add in this function here, date, time, local, now. And once we add in date, time, local, now, we're gonna add an opening and closing parentheses. And what this function does is this returns the current date and time in the local time zone when we are invoking it here in Power Query. Now, so you can see how we currently have this and we want to now select convert to table. So select convert to table here and you'll now see a new column created with just that date and time. We'll go ahead and change this here to a date so that we are just looking at the current date here. The next thing that we would want to do, and we can go ahead and uh, rename this here from column one to current date to make it a bit easier here for us to understand. Now, the next thing that we wanna do, uh, let's imagine that we wanna take a look at the dates for the past three years. We don't really need to look any further back than that for this specific report that we're building. So we wanna look back into the previous three years. 
What we can do here now is we can go ahead and select Add Column and go to Custom Column. Now we're going to create a custom column and we'll call this the three years prior is what we'll name this column here. Now for this column, what we want to do is we want to utilize a function known as date.addYears. Now when we use date.addYears, we're going to reference that current date column that we created. And so as I type this out here and I type a square bracket, you can see it's going to reference the columns that we have existing here. Now date.addYears is going to add a specific number of years from the given date that we're referencing in this expression. Now we're going to go in here and add a number of years after a comma and for our example in this column we want to look back three years so we are going to put minus three. Then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and change the data type of this three years prior column that we have created to a date. Now that we have done that here, the next thing that we want to do is we want to take a look at adding in the start of the year. So although we want to analyze the data that we have in this failed banks query back three years prior, I really do want it to go back to the start of the year. That way as I go in and I analyze data by the quarter, by the month, I'm not excluding any of the months from that year. So we'll go ahead, select add column, custom column here again. And now for this column, we'll call this our start of year. Or actually, let's go ahead, we'll call this our start date. And I'll show you why here in a second, because this is what we're going to leverage to be the start date in that full date column we're creating. So for this function here, for this column, we are going to use date dot start of year. And so that's the one we're going to use here. And so I'm going to scroll down here and pull that in. Oh, let me go ahead and remove that extra date that got added in there. Now, what we want to do is we want to reference that three years prior column because we want to see the start date, the very first date of the very first year. That's what date start of year is going to return to us. And it's going to return to us the very first date of the year three years prior. So what date.start of year is going to do is it's going to return to us the first date from this three years prior column. So I'm going to add a closing parentheses now and here and then we'll hit OK and we will see January 1st of the year 2021. Now we need to change the data type here to a date as well and we're going to go in and add one more column here now and then we're going to create our full date column. So I'm going to select add column and custom column here now. And the next column that we are going to create is going to be the end date. And so this is what we're going to use here to be the final date for the full date column we're going to create. Now for this particular one, we're going to kind of model it after that scenario I mentioned looking six months into the future. And so we want to create a column that's going to allow us to look at this into the future. So I'm going to say date dot add months here now. And what I want to see is I want to refer six months into the future. So date dot add months. And I want to refer to that current date column because I want it to look six months into the future past today's current date. So I'm going to add a comma here now, add in the number six, add a closing parentheses, and then hit OK. Now I'm going to change that end date column to a date data type as well. Now we're ready here now to get into the final column we are going to create. And what we're going to do in this next column is we are going to create a column that's actually going to be a list. So let's go ahead and create that list. So go up to the add column tab, select custom column. And this column here is going to serve as our full date column. Now this column is going to be a list that we create and the list is going to include all dates between our start date and our end date column. Now to create a list, we must create this list inside of curly brackets. And so as we create this here now, what we are going to start typing is the following. We are going to use a function known as number dot from to create this. And then we are going to refer to that start date column. So I'm going to bring in that start date column here now. 
Then we're going to add a closing parentheses. And then to create a list, we're going to type out two periods here now. Now the second part of this will be to use that number dot from function again. And we are now going to bring in the end date. So I'm going to bring in that end date column. We'll add a closing parentheses and a closing curly bracket. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now what we must do is expand out this list that we have created to new rows. So go ahead and hit those arrows to expand to new rows. And now you are going to see that full date column. Once you change that full date column to a date data type, you will see your full list of dates. Now you can go in and you can remove these other columns because as you can see, these are columns that we will no longer need. So you can go to the home tab, select choose columns, uncheck select all, and just keep the date column there. Now you can easily go in here and add in other date columns by going up to the add column tab. And then in this date section here, you can go in and select year and it's going to parse out the year for you from that full date column. We can continue on here selecting that date column, the date button again, and now we can give a quarter column and select and add that in here. Select that date column and now we can also go in here and add in a month column to get the month number. Select the date column again and now we can go in and add the name of the month to get the month name column. And you can continue on from here and you can continue adding in new columns using that date list column we created. We would then go over here to this query and call this our date table here now. And then we can keep going in and adding to our model. I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing one way to go about creating a dynamic date table in the Power Query Editor that you can use to carry out time intelligence functions, to look at the data in your reports at different levels of granularity using those dates slice fields to analyze by the year, by the quarter, by the month. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below to stay up to date with all of the videos that we post.